Hey guys, uh, I'm not sure where you guys are in the process of getting into learning the cloud, but this might be one of the questions, uh, which cloud technology do I go for? Google Cloud, AWS, or Microsoft Azure? So uh, I started off with AWS, but I had the question, Google Cloud or Azure? And at the time, the company that I worked for went crazy. We just spent $10 million on Google and it's coming. So I'm like, okay, let's get Google certified. But then I find out the Google market share is only 4%, but this is after I had already completed my Google Associate Engineer and Google Cloud Architect Pro. While Microsoft and I mean, Microsoft Azure and AWS have like 40% share each. Uh, Microsoft is just not cloud, but they have other uh, products that are also part of their cloud portfolio. But basically my choice to go with Google Cloud was completely wrong. I should have gone, from, gone for Azure, which is what I'm working on right now. So there are multiple things that I found completely senseless. I just like do not make sense in Google Cloud. It's basically, uh, like the way I look at it is three cloud providers. One is Amazon, they did their homework and came up with something that can be used by millions of businesses and get better. Same thing Azure uh, and the way Azure worked or works uh, is a similar concept, uh, not as good as AWS, not as, uh, not sure, I would just stick to like, and not as good as AWS without complicating things too much. But their documentation is amazing, their customer support is amazing, it's Microsoft. AWS, the documentation <laughs> is no good. Now, Google, on the other hand, is just one big bully. They have a lot of money, so they're like, okay, we're gonna come up with a cloud service, even if it doesn't make any sense, use it. And they do have some very, very uh, specialized products, like the Spanner database, it's an RDBMS database that's uh, replicated worldwide. They're, Load balancer, load balancers are ages ahead of AWS and Azure, but those don't really justify the amount of nonsense Google throws at you. And I'll try to explain with one example. There are a ton of them, but just one simple example. So the way uh, accounts are resources, not accounts, the resources that you're going to create uh, for a project. Let's say a company like Amazon has a media department, they have video services, and under the video services, they have a PG-13 section and a rated R section. So the organization is Amazon, organization unit would be media, and then it's divided into accounts and VPCs and resources. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, about the same thing with Azure as well, like it starts with a management group, then it divides itself into accounts. So like a company like Amazon, um, here the account will be the organization unit, like pretty parallel than the call subscriptions. Under subscription, there are resource group, under resource group, there are VPCs, uh, which are basically the networks, and then you have resources, like everywhere you go, you divide related resources into networks. Like that's just something everybody does. Now come to Google Cloud, this is their diagram on their website. Uh, company, Department X, uh, folders, projects, and then resources. Like now this looks simple but the actual implementation of the network segregation, this is what AWS VPC looks like. The account has two VPCs, and then inside that VPC, I separate, like I can segregate the resources 
in by using security groups uh, like basically a security groups is a firewall it's a network inside a network and the way this is designed if i let's say i make a mistake uh, let's say the top four are in one project the second line two are in one project and then the third line three are in one project and i'm like okay i made a mistake i need to rearrange this all you need to do is redefine the security groups which is basically click a button click click change setting then you're done now google first of all you start with a project inside a project you create a vpc and then you share this vpc with other projects so like right there uh, first day first show i'm like what the heck is going on here now, if you are to move resources, now every single resource in project B can communicate with every single resource in project B. And there is no way to stop that communication. You can create a firewall, but that firewall works at the subnet boundary, not in between the machines. So if you have to stop communication between the project B and project C for some machine, you have to physically move that machine and it's not fun. Basically, you have to drop that machine altogether for one project and then move it to the other project. So, and this is your one-off, like a ton of things that doing that don't make any sense. So, uh, coming back to which one to choose, uh, I think if you are, uh, if you have worked with open source technology, if you are uh, leaning towards Unix, uh, like Linux-based platform, if you're using a Mac uh, to work with computers, I think you're better off going with AWS. They have a lot more services uh, and they make a lot of sense. But if you are a Microsoft guy, like let's say you have worked with AD a lot, you know a lot about the AD and that is basically the hands on the best products, like nothing is nothing can match AD right now by any other pro any other projects like by any other cloud team. And <clears throat> if you are a SQL Server professional, if you are a Windows administrator, like it's where is the comfort? Uh, is it Unix or is this Windows? If you are more comfortable with Windows, there are just as many opportunities with Azure uh, as AWS. But if you are more about Unix, go with AWS. If you have more about Windows, I say go with Azure. Now, these are uh, the last slide, the things that you absolutely need to learn. One is uh, dealing with a Linux machine. Uh, it's basically same as any Unix machine, but a little different. Uh, there are multiple flavors. There is Red Hat Linux, there is uh, SUSE Linux, bunch of different flavors, but like the basic uh, working of Linux is same all over. Uh, like on Amazon Linux, you will use yum to update stuff. On uh, Red Hat, you will use uh, apt get. I might be mixing them up, but like basically it's the same thing with a little difference. Terraform very critical this is a tool that works with all three cloud providers uh, all three providers have a different way of building resources and terraform so if you want to manage three of them in a central place uh, terraform is the answer but like terraform is really good for a lot more reasons uh, and you will get there eventually but like once you get a little bit comfortable uh, with any cloud platform start looking into terraform bash goes hand in hand with linux and that git is for source control that has become basically the world standard uh, and source control is for maintaining the correct versions of your code uh, well once you look at look into it it's pretty easy to understand uh, but you need that like these four things by default any cloud provider you want to work with you need these now if you're going with AWS Python absolute must and if you're going with Azure PowerShell an absolute must like basically scripting has to be done like all kinds of automation that you do happens through scripting so bash is common in both places 
uh, AWS is Python heavy, Azure is PowerShell heavy. Uh, it kind of got a little longer than I wanted to, but that's all for now, guys. Good luck.